internet family and coven members. Welcome to the Urgent Destiny reading. Now, this reading is actually going to mostly be focused on what is currently blocking you from achieving your destiny or working towards your destiny. So uh, if you already know what's up, go ahead and click on the timestamps down below. This is group one, two, three, and four. Now, if you're new to pick a card readings, let me go ahead and give you a brief description before we jump in. So basically with each of these piles, you are going to, well, not all of them, but with one pile, technically, you're going to want to pause this video, or you could even check the timestamps if you want to. Sometimes I, when I look at other people's pick a cards to have them read for me in videos, I will go by the numbers that are timestamped. If there's like a lucky number that I associate myself with, I'll be like, Ooh, that one's for me. Cause it has my number in it. Um, or you can stop the video, meditate on the cards for a moment, and then uh, sometimes I'll say the numbers over and over again in my mind. So I'll be like one, 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 two, 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 and I'll just see which one is giving me almost like a vibrational pull towards it. And you'll know when you stop and meditate on the cards. So uh, those are a few good ways to do it. Um, you can also just kind of select one at random, or some people also like to listen to the entire video, and then they pick the ones that resonate with them the most. So so totally up to you how you want to do that, but the timestamps will be down below in the description as well as in the comment section. If you're on mobile, make sure you head to the comment section because for some reason you can't get timestamps in the description if you are on mobile. So um, anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the reading. All right. Hello, my pile number ones. So right off the bat, your guys's destiny involves the six of fire. Now the six of fire card, this is somebody who is not just a peace. I love this like coin of phrase. You're not like a peacekeeper. You're a peacemaker. And there is a difference between a peacekeeper, a peacekeeper and a peacemaker. A peacekeeper is somebody who will just like avoid conflict at all costs will avoid. They're just kind of in I don't want to say in like a sense of a denial, but they choose to just kind of like turn the other cheek to things. A peacemaker is somebody who will stand in between two black and white thinkers and say, you know what, why don't we try to assess how this person could be correct or how this person could be correct. Like peacemakers truly do that. They make peace. So I also get the sense <clears throat> that your guys's destiny has a lot to do with merging two different two different things that normally don't go together. This is like, um, the first thing that came to mind was pickles and ice cream, but I know some people are into that. Um, I've never had it, so I guess I shouldn't knock it till I try it. But um, I feel like you guys are going to be in the destiny of merging things that you have never seen paired together before. This is like, basically you're going to be forming something that doesn't even exist. Like the term hasn't even been made yet. The way forward, the path has not been trodden, trodden ahead of you. You kind of have to go in and do it yourself. And I say that because we have these two people here standing and it looks like they've kind of also maybe met like a stalemate here but then you have this person which I believe resembles you guys in the background holding this cup of intuition um, and also just kind of being this person that's calling the shots in between this black and white thinking right so I do feel like you guys are actually going to be doing something that is very off the cuff and original so um, and I also say that because on top of that for your destiny we see this six of wands. Now the six of wands is a card that normally predicts victory, but with this deck in particular, I feel like it reads a little bit differently. Excuse me. And also if you guys want links to any of the decks that I use today, I'm using three different ones. I'll link them all below in order of appearance uh, if you want to get them for yourself. But the six of wands in this deck to me is actually a lot about rising above the bullshit. Um, this is about like, you guys potentially are very philosophical in the way that you think and you challenge the black and white ideas in the world. You challenge the mind, you challenge the way that other people try to see the world in such a black and white way. And because you do that, you don't really fall into any of their traps. And this could mean that this is a huge part of your destiny in the sense that maybe currently you're doing the opposite of that. I think in a lot of cases with destiny, 
this is something that's very common. Your destiny is meant to, it's almost like you're born into or put into situation after situation after situation where the opposite of your destiny is present. And the reason for that is because you are meant to overcome all of that opposition to move forward into your destiny. So I get the sense that you guys very much are you guys are kind of leading your, you guys are leaders. You're definitely leaders because even this card back here symbolizes a role of leadership where you are kind of the deciding factor between these two people. So you're also somebody that rises above these other, like, I don't want to say like lower vibrations because I don't necessarily think that either, but it's like, you just kind of see past it. You get to a point where you're just like, dude, none of this even matters. Like material doesn't matter. Fame doesn't matter. That's not what I'm in the pursuit of. And you kind of get out of this old paradigm way of thinking, and that's going to really put you towards your true north. Now, the next thing that I see for you guys, pile number one, is what is currently blocking you? We see the queen of earth. And then we also see the seven of wands, but I want to talk a little bit about the queen of earth first. So the queen of earth, I feel like you guys might have some limiting beliefs around money. Whenever I pull a queen or a king of earth or even any of the major court cards or a 10 even or a five, really any, any of the cards that correspond to the pentacles in normal tarot, which these cards are a little bit different than those, but similar. Um, I really get the sense that you guys have maybe been ingrained with some serious beliefs that are just incorrect with your path about money because a queen of earth when she is not being blocked she is somebody that lives in such a constant state of abundance and she knows how to treat herself well she knows how to nurture herself in lavish things and she's not afraid to do it because she's earned it and so I feel like there might be this sense around you guys where you feel like wanting money is greedy or wanting to go after self-fulfillment in terms of a financial move makes you feel somehow bad about yourself or you think that it's wrong to seek after abundance and it's not. So I do feel like a lot of you guys are maybe came in with a lot of weird beliefs around money. Maybe you even saw parents or guardians fight about money a lot. And so you have this really weird idea that money is just like bad. <laughs> and that's something that really is going to stagnate you if you're not able to work through it. Um, and on top of that, with this seven of wands, I really get this instance that you are somebody that is meant to outshine. And not outshine in like a competitive way, but outshine like you're meant to lead because even these cards, number one, this is a progression. We see a six and then a seven of wands. That's a clear progression. Um, but when we see this in a blocked state, this really does lead me to think that you haven't really been put in situations where your light has been able to shine and you've been able to really speak your own truth into existence. You've kind of been overshadowed by all of these other people in your your life or situations in your life. And I want you to know that none of those things are your fault. Um, this is something that's been coming up a lot in the collective when I've been like channeling messages. There has been a lot of people that are blaming themselves for situations that they find themselves in. And this is something that I definitely feel is very prominent in this first pile is you guys are feeling like you just don't even stand a chance because there's so much darkness. But I promise you, once you guys turn on that light switch and start thinking for yourselves and not allowing other people's opinions to bog you down, you guys are going to shine so bright. They're just going to fall sideways away from you. They're not even going to be able to like, they, they can't sit with you <laughs> in the words of, um, is it Gretchen who says that? I mean, girls, you can't sit with us. They're not even going to be able to sit with you because you're just going to be so not like, I never, ever, 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 ever want to give you guys the impression that like I'm saying you're going to be so much better than all of these people that maybe have have hurt you or or made you feel like you can't shine. I never want to give you guys that impression because I believe we are all a part of ourselves. We are all all of ourselves pushed out. <laughs> and that's another concept for another video at another time because it's a very complicated topic. But what I am saying is like 
when you're not a vibrational match with someone, the universe will literally pull them away from you. And the second you stop playing into their idea of you and stop like letting them narrate your story for you, they will literally fall away effortlessly. Whether it's family members, friends, it doesn't matter. You just have to stop believing the narrative that they've spun for you. So especially in regards to finances and wealth. So um, we have up next, oh, excuse me. Uh, we have uh, the root of your disbelief. So where is this really coming from? Because something I always really, really, really like to uh, talk about is how when there's an issue that we're facing in life in general, if we just chop, like I imagine it like a flower garden and you guys, if you've stuck around my channel a while, you maybe have heard me talk about this, but if you imagine your life like a flower garden and there's, there's weeds growing around it, right? There's problems. <laughs> if you try to just cut the tops of the weeds off, it's not going to get rid of the weeds. You have to get down to the root of the problem. So for you guys, the root of these blockages that are keeping you from your destiny currently are number one, you're afraid. You are completely afraid to take any sort of risk because somebody has implanted it in your head that the risk is not worth taking. And I see that here with the leap. You go first, the universe will catch you. It's like, Maybe you've taken risks before and you haven't seen them work out or somebody has put so much fear into your mind or into your consciousness about something. Um, this could also be a past life situation too. There's fear that you just are innately have from a past life as well, where you're afraid to take any kind of risk. You're afraid to put your ideas out into the world. You're afraid because you have all of these black and white thinkers that think the world has to be one way, but you haven't met all of the people that don't think that way yet. And so I do feel like there's a part of you that keeps yourself silent because you fear that there will not be support. Well, this card is here to tell you that the universe supports you. And honestly, that's the only support you need to get started. And then we have a star seed. What lights you up? I feel like there's a majority of you that also are a root of the problem is that you're not... Um, you're not taking the opportunity to actually ask yourself what lights you up. You're doing things from a place of what everyone else is doing. Um, and I think we can all get caught up in this to a degree at times because we all just, you know, we all want to scream and shout and be the loudest voice in the room when we're trying to be heard, especially if you're into entrepreneurship, which I feel like the queen of earth does speak a little bit to entrepreneurship as well. Um, but I feel like a lot of us don't actually listen to what is lighting us up. We just kind of say, ooh, that worked for that person, so maybe it will work for me. Or, oh, that worked for them, so let me try to incorporate that in my own way. Instead of just truly getting quiet and saying, what would make me feel so happy right now? If money was no object, right? Because we have some limiting belief around money here. If money was no object, how would I spend my days? And hear me out on this one for a second, especially, wow, that was a really crazy channeled message. Um, because there's a beach right here too, that we can see there's waves. And I was just about to say, I, I've heard this a lot. Um, in my life from multiple different people that it's like, oh, when I retire and uh, shout out to my twin flame, if she's listening to this at all, because I do feel like we've talked about this before, but it's like, oh, when I retire, like I want to be at the beach painting. That's what I want to do. This is a lot of people's retirement idea. Now I'm not saying don't do that. I'm saying do it now. If that's what you think is going to light you up when your life is coming to its close and you've kind of lived it all, what are you waiting for? Why would you wait? Why would you wait? <laughs> Why would you wait until you are, you know, 60 plus to do that? Why wouldn't you go down to the beach, drive yourself there? If you can drive, ask someone to take you. If you can't take your canvas, take your easel, take your paints and do it today. There is literally no reason. There's no reason for you to wait until you're 60 to do that, if that's what lights you up right now. So I think a lot of you also feel like there is this timing in your life that has to be so precise. So I have to have kids by this point. I have to have a spouse by this point. I have to have my career figured out by this point. And that's just not the case. What you should be doing is actually following your bliss and not being afraid of it. Don't be so scared of it. If you are truly following your bliss, I promise 
you will not fail. You won't. Because you were not incarnated on this planet with desires to not see them play out and fulfilled. I promise. I've seen it in my own life. I've seen it in countless lives. I promise. Um, And then lastly, we have your steps forward. And for those, we have a 10 of wands. And we also have an 8 of pentacles. So with the 10 of wands card down here, I feel like you guys are going to have to put in some work. Um, the 10 of wands usually speaks to having a lot on your plate. And I do feel like you guys are going to have to put some work and it's going to be more work than you want to do at first. And I do, I, I almost want to tell you guys that I'm sorry because girl, I'm a Taurus. We don't work hard unless we have to. (laughs) And that is the truth. Like we're not lazy inherently. And anybody who tells you a Taurus is lazy, you can tell them to F right off because that is not true. We just prioritize our luxury time as well. We know how to work and play in a beautiful balance. So I do feel like though, that there is going to be a lot. You are going to have to, um, maybe take on a little bit more your quote unquote side hustle needs a little bit more of a push to it. Or if you actually are in a career field that you are already enjoying, you need to be taking up a little bit more work to get to where you want to go. I also see again with this progression, we have the six of wands, the seven of wands, and now a 10. So this is also this 10 of wands in particular is this is my trapped card. So this is also you breaking down limiting beliefs and pushing these branches out of the way so that you can see the path forward. So I do feel like there's going to be a lot of soul searching for some of you guys that are listening to this that picked pile number one that you really have no iota what you want to do. This is also going to be you soul searching. And then we see the eight of pentacles. And I love this card because this really goes in tandem with like doing work. Um, the eight of pentacles to me is like all work is good work. And in this deck in particular, I really feel like this is a deeply creative card because it's a spider with a web and spiders create these beautifully intricate creative webs. Whenever I see a spider in my house, before I take a cup and a piece of paper and gently remove it, um, I, remember to myself that spiders are a symbol of creativity. They are a symbol of getting in touch with your creative nature. And if you ever encounter a spider, ask yourself what you were just thinking about. Ask yourself what you were just talking about and see if there's creativity you can build on top of that. Treat the spider like it's a spirit animal. And I think you guys, that's all I have for you. So I hope you guys uh, got something out of this. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter for daily inspirational content over there. I'm at Cozy Kale. I would love to have you and uh, I will see you guys in a future video. Bye. All right, my beautiful pile number twos for you guys right off the bat for what is your destiny. I actually see the ace of earth or the one of earth. And if you guys want any of the decks that I use today, I will link them down below in the description. But for your guys' destiny, I really get this sense that This is something very, very, very material. Um, You guys actually are, excuse me, potentially destined to have a lot of money. (laughs) And I say that with a reason because the card that actually I pulled to go on top of this one is the Wheel of Fortune. And the Wheel of Fortune also talks a lot about karma too, but because we pulled basically the ace of earth, which is like a gift from the universe of abundance. Um, it's also about like new beginnings. I mean, aces always kind of talk a little bit about new beginnings. It's also about opportunities, potential rewards and, um, goals. I feel like you guys are extremely goal oriented and ambitious and potentially have a lot of earth energy in your natal charts. Um, I mean, I feel like a lot of, especially like, I feel like Taurus is very like money motivated, goal oriented, Um, but that would also be Virgo as well as Capricorn. Capricorn is like the most ambitious, I feel like in the Zodiac. So um, 
Some of you guys might find that that is like a major part of your star chart. Doesn't necessarily mean it's your sun sign. It could be just like a lot of that energy in your chart. You'd have to look at the whole thing to actually, to actually see. But <clears throat> basically, I feel like your guys' destiny is... The reason you guys are supposed to have a lot of financial abundance is because of how you are supposed to use it. Uh, you know, we could sit and it's funny, we were just talking about in pile number one's reading about how like they maybe had some money blockages. But for you guys, I think something you need to remember, if you guys have really good fortune in this life as being part of your destiny, please remember how you decide to spend it because money is no, is nothing. Like it doesn't actually, it's not greedy. It's not evil to have money. It's how you choose to use it. So if you are fortunate enough to be very blessed financially, you know, don't hesitate to use that money to do something good in the world start projects that are helpful to the world and helpful to others you know don't um money can do a lot for people in the world <laughs> um and i feel like there's a really really high potential that you guys will do something really 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 remarkable with it um, and with the Wheel of Fortune, I feel like you guys are just really lucky individuals. Like it feels like everything kind of always works out for you. Um, the Wheel of Fortune also, again, talks about just a lot of fortune, period. But it also deals a little bit in karma in the sense that the wheel is always turning. And so the reason I'm telling you guys, if you are fortunate enough to be very fortunate, um, make sure that you are working in a good intended way because even if it doesn't happen in this life rest assured that when you see the wheel of fortune on this if you are not acting in good faith and you are using money in a way that is not great you will see that potentially even if you go and reincarnate in the next life you will see the effects of that so eventually that will catch up with you so be sure that you're acting in good faith your business deals are good you're not cheating people you're not you know things like that um and also i get the sense that for you guys pile number two your destiny your destiny is just very expansive in general because I feel like the Wheel of Fortune is a very expansive card period because it encompasses a lot of different elements. We have the sun and the moon. We have this beautiful creative web that is being spun around the middle. We have all of the seasons. We have the dark half of the year, the light half of the year. We have, you know, the Wheel of Fortune really encompasses a lot of life cycles. And so I feel like for you guys, your destiny is maybe something that is going to be very transformative. And you may actually find that you have multiple career paths throughout your life because of this because there's not necessarily one divine path for you there's several and you guys I feel like are constantly in the search of that next big transformative moment and I also feel like a lot of you guys are being blessed with this destiny in particular because of the things that you have done in past lives that like led you to this moment like you wanted to experience life in this sort of way um and i also feel for you guys that you have so much potential like you like everybody wakes up every single day with an infinite amount of potential and possibility but i feel like for you pile number twos once you really tap into it i think it could be really exciting or really scary in the sense that it could be very scary because you're like oh my god i have so many different things i could do how will i ever pick just one and all the opportunities are available to me or it could be very um, exciting. It could, like, it's almost like how you say it, you know, it's like, oh my God, so many things or oh my God, so many things. So I feel like for you guys, you are in this life to experience a deep transition from, this also could be a rags to riches scenario as well. Um, I just feel like it's very cyclical. You guys are going to see a lot of cycling things. And I feel like you are really are here to, you are here to actually break a lot of karmic cycles from the past, or maybe you have, 
you I feel like you guys have a lot of like karmic ties. Karmic contracts are potentially coming through, but karmic ties, because all of these little webs that are intricate as well, also resemble karmic ties to people. So in this life, even though you may be extremely blessed and extremely fortunate, uh, there's a lot of karma that you're here to also get rid of. So just, I feel like the Wheel of Fortune can be a really beautiful card or a really scary card. So take that with how you will. And up next we see what are the potential um, blockages for you. First we have the Five of Earth. Now the Five of Earth is... This is why I said, if you guys have money, you need to be careful. And I did not pre look at these. Like before I started with the camera on, I did not look at what was gonna come out with these. But this is why I say you guys need to be really careful in how you act with money in your, in your destiny, because this card as a potential blockage talks a lot about kind of having a little bit of the devil in you. And I don't mean literally like possession, etc. That's not what I'm talking about. When we talk about the quote unquote devil, we're talking about kind of like the things that we overindulge in, overindulging in food, over overindulging in money, in um, you know, there's too much of anything is not a good thing. <laughs> Even if it's pumpkins. I mean, is can we really have too many pumpkins? I'm like, okay, for instance, like if you eat too many carrots, I believe like there's a condition where your skin can like turn orange. So, or maybe that's tomatoes I'm thinking of. But anyways, the point is that too much of one thing can be not good for you. And if you're using it in not a great way and you're being, you're making decisions with it that hurt other people or affect other people in a negative way, then that's not, that's like, that's a very big blockage for you is you need to make sure you're acting in good faith with it. Um, and a lot of times if you are someone that came into this life already very fortunate, um, it can also come down to a sense of entitlement. So just be very careful and recognize that that's not everyone's experience in this life. And some people spend their entire lives trying to get to where you came from basically. So it's, it's an interesting way to live, if I'm honest with you, because granted, I'm, I don't necessarily have that as my experience. But I feel like I'm, I'm the way that I channel sometimes is like through my own personal story, I'll feel like pressured to share something. So I guess that pressure is on now. Hello. <laughs> but through my own personal story, the best way I could explain this to you is like, it's almost like you're on the inside looking out and it's a very different experience. Um, and in my life where this was very similar for me is uh, to make a long story short, when I did gaming for a while, which I had a relatively successful gaming career a while back and I got invited to all these really cool events and it was like the chances and opportunities of a lifetime. And then when everything kind of started to go downhill, it was like I had built my entire identity there and I didn't know what to do. And it felt like, oh gosh, you're being so, I, my, nobody told me this, but this was how I felt. I felt like I was being so ungrateful for all the opportunities that I'd been given when in reality, I was just on the inside looking out. And it's a very different perspective than when you're trying to climb and get to a certain place. So just recognize that your perspective on this is going to be different than those around you. Um, I get the sense that this pile, not a lot of people are going to pick it. <laughs> I feel like this message is for a very few specific people. Um, so rest assured that your perspective is very, very, very different. And it's actually going to be a really good thing for you to try to understand people that have not come from where you've come from. That's going to be a really big part of your own growth and removing your own blockages is understanding that concept. And we also see the two of pentacles here. Gosh, so much money in this spread. Um, the two of pentacles is all about balance. So again, this almost parrots exactly this card to a degree because the two of pentacles is all about balance in its entirety. It's, well, we also have this transformate. Oh my God, there, sorry. There is so much of this reading that is like intricately laced together. That's, it's so crazy how tarot does this. But <clears throat> um, I did channel a few different deities as well as like guides from anybody who watches these. So this is crazy. But we also have the symbol of transformation from the butterfly. Like we were talking about up here, this 
transformation, um, you may be resistant to change, resistant to transformation, resist it. And the more that you resist this, the more it is going to persist. Um, remember that what you resist will persist. And in terms of trying to find balance in that, I just feel like you guys are going to, if you're not balancing things out, you are going to be the most stressed out. Like for you not having balance in every sense of the matter through every step of your life's journey, you're going to notice that that's where you start to falter. It's harder for you to pick yourself back up when you feel like things have gotten so off kilter because you've let like little things go. You've let little tiny, oh, I forgot to do my meditation for, this is just an example. Maybe you don't meditate, but you know, oh, I forgot to meditate for X amount of days. What now? I feel like that's really going to be harder for you to pick yourself back up and to get refocused. For some people, they cannot do something for weeks at a time and then pick it back up like it's nothing. So balance is going to be an issue for you if you don't get it under control. Um, and I hesitate to even use the word control because I believe that when we are in the state of flow, we are doing the best and doing the most. So just, you know, be easy on yourself. Don't stress the balance so hard, but just Remember that balance is going to be like the best thing you personally will be able to do for yourself during any times of big, deep transition is holding yourself accountable and continuing to keep things balanced, calm and level headed. Um, and something else I want to add to this is for some of you, it might be that you have come from quite the opposite as well. You've come from nothing and there's potential that a great windfall will fall upon you and you're not going to know what to do with it. It's actually going to be more scary because you've never had that much uh, abundance in your life at any one given time. And so it's like, oh my God, what do I do with this? How do I manage this? So just remember that it's all a balancing act if this is you and even balancing your checkbook, even balancing your bank accounts, things like that, making sure to hire the appropriate people to handle your financial matters if you feel like you can't do it yourself and not overindulging. <laughs> um, really interesting. God, I love tarot so much. So then we have the root of the issue. Actually, let's put this one over here. We have don't dim to fit in. How are you dimming your light in order to fit in? And we also have the ever unfolding rose cracked open. It's happening for you, not to you. So I find this really interesting because I mentioned, um, I mentioned not feeling any sense of entitlement. And so I feel like this, the ever unfolding rose with cracked open, it's happening to you, not for you. This is a very simple lesson in life that I feel like a lot of people need to hear just in general, that when you have the attitude that everything in life is happening to you, life is going to be so much harder for you. Life is going to be so much more unfulfilling and so much more upsetting. And you may find yourself overindulging in things to kind of combat that. So remember that life is happening for you. Even the instances that you think are bad are actually there to serve you and to serve your highest purpose and your destiny. So don't forget about that. That is a root issue. Um, you know, you don't want to go in to extract issues from your life and just cut the top off. You want to get down to the root of it. So that's a really big root issue that's coming out is that maybe you have the attitude that everything is happening to you when in fact that is not the case. And that is actually going to be a lesson that you will have to learn throughout. And then we also see don't dim to fit in. How are you dimming your light in order to fit in? There might be a part of you that, um, Oh, man, I feel like because ooh, money is such a weird topic and I feel like money came out really, really strong in this reading. I feel like this could go two ways as well. If you're somebody who hasn't really come from having a lot, you could try to use money to fit in with other people and think that that is going to help you serve your highest calling uh, it, when it won't. 
uh, you can't buy love. <laughs> as cliche as that sounds, you cannot buy love. Um, you cannot buy, I mean, money will get you so far, but it's not going to buy you the parts that really matter in life. And the second thing is, if you're on the opposing side of that, you've come from a lot of really good fortune. Maybe there's a part of you that hangs out with a certain crowd that keeps you in a lower vibrational setting that you do have to dim your natural spiritual self out in order to feel like you can sit with them or fit in with them. And so just be very serious about extracting those things or moving past them or seeing them for what they are so that you can move forward. And then lastly, we see you moving forward. We have the uh, Father of Cups and the Daughter of Cups. Now, the Father of Cups, the, excuse me, let me move this up quite a bit because I feel like you guys can't see these cards very well. There we go. I feel like, interestingly enough, wherever your destiny is, I feel like you're meant to be in a pair. And this doesn't have to be male, female, even though these are male, female archetypes. This could be whoever, you know, um, but with a father of cups and a daughter of cups going forward, I'm getting this really big message that you guys are actually meant to collaborate on something really major. And so this could be a twin flame, um, this could be a twin flame thing we have going on. Remember, twin flames do not have to be romantic. It could be a romantic partner that's going to um, help you kind of boost yourself into the next thing. But I feel like there's a collaboration coming up for you guys that's going to be very transformative for you. And it's going to push you even closer into your destiny. Um, I also feel like these two cards could resemble your guys's deep intuition and getting in touch with that with a father of cups um they're not not quite as intuitive as a queen of cups but the intuition is a big part of what the father of cups does i feel like a father of cups is somebody who is a spiritual leader and leads other people in spirituality um and a daughter of cups i feel like with the daughter it's like being open to anything that could happen being open again life isn't happening to you it's happening for you be open to all of the opportunities that come into your scope because you might find there's something really magical there just waiting for you with this beautiful rainbow here right in the water um, and i love this because this is actually like the shadow of this duck right here and so it's like even the the shadow side of life or the shadow self or things that make us a little bit uncomfortable or go bump in the night or seem creepy you know we can we can correspond that shadowy aspect to being the most beautiful parts of our life and the things that teach us the greatest most valuable lessons so thank you so very much pile number two please do not forget to follow me on instagram and twitter i'm at cozy kale and uh, i will see you guys in a future video bye Hello, my beautiful pile number threes. So right off the bat for your destiny, we have the three of earth and the three of three of earth actually talks about knowledge and planting the seeds of knowledge. So I feel like you guys are really, your destiny is going to include accumulating a lot of knowledge. So whether this is continuing your education in some way, I do feel like it has something to do with education, whether it be the traditional college route or going into a higher level of education. And what I mean by that is like spiritual education, maybe going on retreats, things like that. I feel like your destiny is really going to be about you being the never ending student. So you want to make sure for your intended path that it's it's something that you will always be able to grow and learn something new from. You're not necessarily going to be in your prime role in life if you are in a role where you feel like you're not learning anything and you feel completely stuck. So I do feel like that's going to be very important for you guys. And the reason I said higher learning is because we also see the moon card right on top of this. And the moon actually corresponds to A, the divine feminine, and B, also the shadow self or the shadow aspect of ourselves, the unconscious mind. So... If we look into this, this is a lot about using your intuition, getting in touch with the unconscious, making the unconscious conscious. And so I do feel like some of you guys are on a very spiritual learning path. Maybe you guys are becoming the grand master so that you can become the teacher. And in terms of learning, you don't even necessarily have to be the forever student. 
in a practical way. <laughs> and when I say that, I think when we think of the forever student, we think of people that are like, always in college forever perpetually in college or in some kind of like schooling which that's fine if that's what you want to do but <clears throat> um it doesn't necessarily have to be that it could just be that you want to find a line of work or something that sparks your joy that lights you up that just allows you the capacity to keep learning always like for me here's a good here's a good instance for that uh for me i find the path of be being an astrologer very 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 fulfilling for me i myself feel like a forever student in one way or another and astrology to me i'll never know it all i feel like there's so much to know from astrology and about astrology i could study it until the day i die and i still wouldn't know everything and that really fulfills me i like the fact that i can't know it all because there's always something new to study and something new to learn i'm constantly growing and evolving in that. Um, same with tarot. I feel like it's something that is always, you're never going to know it all. Um, there's always different ways to learn and understand and to connect with it. So I do feel like that also with the divine feminine, it could also be that your destiny is very entwined with the more feminine aspect of the self. Um, and it, that doesn't mean that you have to be a woman. You could be a man, a woman, non-binary. It doesn't really matter. When we talk about the divine feminine, feminine <laughs> the divine feminine and the divine masculine, these are energies that all of us have. All of us have these aspects of ourselves and the divine feminine specifically speaks more to the nurturing into intuitive side of us. So it could also be that your destiny is going to be very entwined with your intuition. And whether that be for you just kind of expanding on your own intuition or teaching others how to do so, for some reason, the role of the teacher keeps coming out like you guys are perpetually in a state of learning so that you can teach it to others. Now, moving on to a potential blockage for you guys from why you're not maybe achieving your destiny currently or why you don't feel like you're on the path, maybe, or things that you do that kind of deviate you from the path a little bit, we see the nine of fire and the nine of fire here really talks about complicating the situation in terms of a blockage you overcomplicate steps that you could take where you will take 10 steps to do something where it could have taken three so and this could be that maybe mentally you just have a lot going on and I don't mean that in like a mental health kind of way. What I mean is you maybe have a very fast paced mind, um, especially if you have a lot of mercury in your chart uh, or mercury placements in your chart, you might find that you have a very, very, very active mind. And sometimes that can get you in a little bit of trouble because you will overcomplicate situations. So I do feel like a potential blockage for you is that it's overcomplicating things that are meant to be very simplistic. Um, and the reason I also say that is because I feel like with this daughter of wands coming out, the daughter of wands is definitely a creative archetype. And I feel like when you overcomplicate things and you don't let them flow, it actually puts you in a state of not being able to create from a state of flow, which is very detrimental to the artist path. If you are maybe this could very much be an artist path, you're learning about like color theory and, um, you know, art history, things like that. Um, but if you are somebody who is more of a creative type, like the daughter of wands, I could definitely see where this would really stunt your path. It would, it would cause you to almost like you're second guessing everything that you put out there. Um, I sense that there's like this blockage of a lack of personal power and not feeling like you're smart enough, not feeling creative enough, not feeling educated enough, you know, to actually fulfill your destiny. And so I feel like for you, the thing you're going to want to overcome is that overcomplicating even just something as simple as your thoughts, where maybe they are not in alignment with your highest good. Or it could be that you just need to bring in another set of fresh eyes to kind of work alongside you to get you to simplify things a little bit. You know, they always say that, um, is it hindsight's 2020? <laughs> Yeah, hindsight's twenty twenty. where, you know, it, you can see things that have already happened perfectly and like, oh, I could have cut this part off right here and that would have gone so much faster. Um, I also want to encourage you guys to know that it's not a race. Getting to your destiny is not like the final destination. 
It is very much a lifelong process. Even if you find your destiny early on, it's going to shape and change and grow as you grow as a person in this human existence. So it's not a final destination. Um, So this reading really pertains at any given time that maybe you will continuously come up against this particular blockage. Now, the root of the issues here, we see the initiation, rite of passage crossing the threshold, and we see the inner temple, uh, the inner temple devotion tune into the portal of your heart. So when we see this, the initiation, I also sense that for a root cause of why you're not really progressing in that direction or in that path of higher learning, or maybe you even just want to pursue a different type of learning than you've been doing. It's like you're afraid of all of the hard work. You're afraid of the initiation phase. So let's say we're talking about school. The initiation phase would be to me, taking the SATs, um, at least in America. I don't know what that is elsewhere. Apologies. Um, Uh, taking the SATs, picking out the school you actually want to go to, applying for those schools, um, going through and sitting with yourself and actually discovering what it is that lights you up in general so you can decide the path you want to go down. You know, there's this, I feel like you're getting really caught up and this might be part of the phase that you're complicating. You're making a mountain out of a molehill (laughs) where like this type of thing could be very, very, very simple if you just quieted down and tuned into yourself a little bit more instead of just trying to say, hey, um, this, this, um, sorry, I totally just lost my train of thought. Um, Instead of trying to say like, oh, this is so hard. This is so difficult. I'm never going to get anywhere. This is never going to happen. Just take one step at a time. It's baby steps. And I feel like a lot of you guys are also stressed out because you don't feel like you know exactly what you want and you feel like, A, you're not good at anything. You're not, again, not creative enough, not smart enough. There's a lot of these like self-doubts petering out in this reading. And I feel like what you guys really need to do is actually just get quiet and be with yourselves. And I don't care who you are. I don't know a single spiritual leader or teacher out there that does not encourage the practice of meditation. Almost every single one of them will ask you if you come to them with a problem if you've been meditating. And I don't want you guys to also think that meditation is like the end all be all and it's going to solve all of your problems because it won't, but it will allow you to start to see the path forward to fix those problems yourself, if that makes sense. Um, So that's what I'm seeing as some of the root issues is some of you guys aren't willing to sit down and be with yourselves. And you're also afraid of all of the introductory stuff. So don't let that stop you. The way forward, I see the mother of wands and the ace of wands. So I'm getting the sense that this actually, I think I was, I hit the nail right on the head when I said, I feel like you guys are on a very creative path as well. Because the ace of wands, you guys are naturally gifted. You're naturally creative. You're the natural artist. And it doesn't mean that you're so good at drawing and so good at painting and this is like the best ever you only create the best freaking art it's like you guys truly have a knack for a maybe even a myriad of arts you know maybe you guys are into photography into film into into painting into drawing into singing into acting you know there are so many different forms writing as well uh, there are so many different forms of uh, there are so many different forms of artistry out there and oh my gosh i just realized that this is my spread <laughs> I say that in every, every one of these, I always say one of these piles is for me. And I usually don't know until I'm done. And this is the pile that was for me, um, as well as whoever else picked group number three. But, um, you know, you guys are already naturally gifted. So the way forward is to embrace that natural gift and stand in your personal power because we see all these reds and yellows and oranges. And what does that represent in the chakra system? This represents the root, the sacral and the solar plexus chakra. And all of those, when you ignite them, they are all there to support you. I mean, all of the chakra system is there to support you, but especially standing in your own power is the strongest one that's coming out for me, which would be the yellow and the solar plexus chakra. That's like you believing in yourself enough to go forward. And so I feel like for you guys, you are very naturally gifted and you need to stop doubting yourselves. And with the mother of wands, 
first and foremost, the mother of wands, she will always get what she wants. And I say this every time I pull, uh, this is like the correspondence to the queen of wands. She will always get what she wants. She is a natural creative leader. Um, she is naturally gifted and talented. She is somebody that knows what she wants and goes after it. And that is the way forward. It's like, you know, getting this like self-assurance and moving forward in inspired action is going to be your best foot forward. And even if it doesn't make sense, even if there are things that you're like, Ooh, I don't know. So-and-so did something similar and it didn't really work out for them. Why would it work out for me? You guys need to drop the doubting act and just trust yourselves. The more you sit and second guess yourselves and the direction that you're trying to go and the direction that the universe is trying to unfold for you, the harder it's going to be. What you you resist persists. I think I said this for pile number two as well. What you resist will persist. So please, you guys stop doubting yourselves. Stop second guessing yourselves. You are so beautifully, divinely gifted and creative and just continue to advance on that knowledge. And I wish you guys the best of luck in fulfilling your destiny. Please do, do not forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'm at Cozy Kale. I would really love to have you guys there for daily inspirational content. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in a future video. Bye. All right, my pile number fours, welcome in, welcome in. I think you guys are going to be very excited about this one. So you guys, your destiny, I feel like you guys are writers. You are writers and you are storytellers because you guys got your destiny as the sage. And the sage is someone who is a master storyteller. And a lot of times this is in terms of writing, but it doesn't always have to be. Sometimes the sage can also represent like if there's video creation, um, photography, any way that you tell your story. Um, this could also be like interpretive dance, things like that. You guys are natural storytellers. Um, this is what you came here in this life to do is to tell your story, to tell fictional stories, factual stories. Um, just, I would say, be careful if you are writing a factual story or trying to tell something that's factual. Do not fudge the truth whatsoever because the sage, I feel like, can be a little guilty of that at times. And with this two of swords, I feel like you guys also feel like you're maybe pulled in multiple directions at the same time. And you guys sometimes can be a little bit afraid of the ideas that come to you intuitively because you're not really sure how to act on them. Uh, and that is because you guys are so multi-talented in telling your stories. I feel like you guys like this reading, some of you guys might resonate with reading number three and this one based on what I'm seeing so far. Um, Cause these last two readings are definitely for the creative types, but this too, I feel like you have so many things that you're invested in that you don't really know which direction you actually want to go. And you feel like it's hard for you to pick one thing. So just know that you're multifaceted and there's, if you're trying to like tell stories, put yourself out there a little bit more, be a little bit more intricately creative with your storytelling, um, you can do multiple things. It doesn't have to be, this is the only way I can share of myself. You can share yourself in multiple ways. Just be careful not to overload and overwhelm yourself because what happens when you get into a state of overwhelm with this kind of destiny is you will actually put yourself in a perpetual pause. <laughs> you will just be on hold for a major chunk of your life, kind of afraid to make any kind of movement. So don't let yourself stay there. It's okay to like sit on the line for a little bit, try to figure out how you want to get your ideas out there and your stories out there, but don't sit there for months and months and months and months, just perpetually afraid to speak. Um, that's a really important thing, especially, I feel like this also has a little bit to do with a mental prison too. You guys feel like mentally confined by the ways that you could tell your stories. And I'm telling you that that is something you don't need to consider. You can tell your stories as often, as much or as little as you want to, and in any which way that you want to. Now, a potential blockage for those of you that are in the business of wanting to tell your tell and share your stories is this is all about being a blockage of worthiness. Um, this is the four of water. And I wonder if I can get this card closer to you guys so you can actually see it. Focus. Okay. Well, the camera doesn't want to focus, but, um, 
If you look at this card, if you have this deck, this is the Dreams of Gaia deck, this man has scars all over his body, but he's looking in a mirror and it's like he's noticing all of his flaws and he doesn't think that he is worthy of praise. And I feel like these blockages are not your fault. Um, more often than not, they're, that all the blockages that I've talked about in any of these readings are not your fault or your doing. These blockages actually come about based on how we have come into this life. But it's like you have been surrounded by people that have given you these blockages, these false beliefs that they have about themselves and sharing their stories. They've impressed that onto you. And so now you feel like you can't share of yourself the way that you want to. And you feel like you are so flawed because of these things that people have said to you. Maybe somebody's critiqued your writing, critiqued your process, told you you're not creative enough or never let you express your creativity creativity, creativity openly to them. Um, and sadly, I feel like for a lot of you guys, family is like the worst culprit of all. Um, they're the ones who will put you down and say that you shouldn't do it. So, um, and if you have any friends like that in your life, cut, cut them out. <laughs> you do not need friends around you like that family as well to a degree, but I don't want to get into that right now because I feel like that is a whole topic. Um, but I feel like you guys maybe have a lot of insecurity around the creative work that you do. Um, and again, it's not your faults. It's impressions that other people have given you that you have taken internally into yourself and said that it's the truth even when it's not. And on top of that, for a blockage, you guys also got the nine of wands. And so I feel like you guys, you always feel like anything you're trying to create is an uphill battle. It always seems like it's so much harder for you and it's because you have let yourself. And again, I want to reiterate, it's not your fault. I'm really getting a big message from, from somebody's guide, somebody's guide <laughs> that's here that is saying, this is not your fault. This is not your fault. Um, you have been silenced for a really long time creatively because of how you chose to incarnate. And what's interesting is when you overcome this and you actually get to the top of this beautiful staircase and you start to share of yourself in a really free, empowering, beautiful way, it's going to be like those hardships are going to be a part of your story. They're going to be a part of how you share yourself with the world and it's going to inspire and uplift so many people. So don't let yourself be blocked by that. And I also want to point out a little bit of the imagery here. We also see these colors. Um, we see this like purple and blue, like indigo like color here. These represent the crown and the third eye chakra. And so when you look at those two chakras, that's like you kind of advancing in a way that is very, very expansive for your consciousness. And so I think that's going to be a really big way of how to unblock yourself. Now, Getting to the root of the blockage, we see the great gathering. It's all coming together. Believe, um, excuse me. It's all coming together. Intuitive hits, soul tribe. And then we also see pillar of light. Your vibration is rising. You are the oracle. So when we see cards like this, let me scoot these over just a smidge. Um, when we see cards like this, the great gathering is more about you finding a soul tribe outside of what was familiar. Because again, I'm getting the sense that a lot of you guys have been beaten down by people in your life, by family members, by people that you maybe once called friends or you still call friends. And I feel like you guys haven't really gotten the opportunity to experience what it feels like to be wholly and truly supported in your endeavors. And I want you guys to rest assured that those people do exist. There are people out there that want to support everything that you're about. They want to be there to help guide you. They want to be there to be like your message is going to impact them so powerfully when you step into your power and call it all back that they are going to be so inspired by you people will follow you anywhere and I don't mean that in like a culty <laughs> um, leader kind of way it's in a very beautiful like your message is just going to be so inspirational 
that people literally from around the globe are going to follow what you have to say. And with Pillar of Light, your vibration is rising. You are the oracle. I also feel like kind of like with our last reading, there's a lot of second guessing going on for you. You're second guessing yourself and your intentions and you're second guessing your ability to actually create and you already know what to do. You already know what to do. You just need to trust in your own divineness, your own divine timing. Trust that you are a human, excuse me, you are a spiritual being having a human experience. And if you can tap into the spiritual being of your inner light and yourself, you will be so much more equipped to actually go forward. Like if you guys are in the business of, and I keep saying in the business, I don't mean that like you're already like in a publishing house or you're a great big director. I mean, maybe you are, but... When I say in the business, I guess I'm meaning it more in a very general term, <laughs> but um, when you guys are actually in the business of raising your vibration and trying to get in touch with yourself and kind of tuning out these negative forces, you are going to get so much more aligned with your purpose. The book or the manuscript or the video content or whatever it is, is literally going to create itself. Like it's not even going to be difficult once you remove those blockages from you. And up next, we see the way forward. So the way forward for you guys, we see a son of wands and we see a five of wands. So, oh man, the son of wands, this corresponds to the knight of wands. Basically, you just need to go for it. Again, with the not second guessing yourself, just, sorry, I'm a Virgo 10th house. I'm over here straightening the cards like every two seconds. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but with a son of wands, this is like going towards it with full steam ahead, full force ahead, not second guessing anything that you're doing and just going after it with like passion and vigor and holding on to the goal in mind and like nothing can stop you. You will truly be unstoppable. We have, excuse me, this son of wands actually glowing off this like yellow and orange um, and notice the center of his like magic of his wand is actually darkness and so I feel like because you have come from this dark place it's like petered out and you're actually able to transmute that darkness it gets kind of it's like dark and then it gets more white and then it turns into yellow and orange which is all about personal power um, ambition and going after your goals so from that darkness you're actually able to push yourself outwards and go after things with a ferocity that you maybe didn't even know that you had. Um, and with the five of wands, this actually is a lot about you having to fight for this path. Now, I don't know if this necessarily is an inner battle or an external battle. I'm sensing that it could be a little bit of both. There might be a little bit of a battle and a conflict between family and friends while you're pushing towards this, but I want you to not give up on yourself and to please continue to be in search of that soul tribe, continue to climb the staircase, continue to go forth in this vigor and in this passion because it's, it's so worth it. Did I just, I did. I just freaking, I just freaking visco girled it right now. I stuttered. <laughs> um, shout out if you know what the heck I'm talking about. I'm so old. I actually had to look up what a visco girl was. I didn't know. Um, but with this five of wands, it's, it is, it's, it's a fight. It's a fight, but it's a useless fight. And so I think this is more of a caution of like, stop trying to explain yourself to people that have never listened. Stop trying to share your ideas with people that have never had your best interests at heart. Stop trying to impress how you see the world on those people. And instead, especially if you're writing, I feel like writing keeps coming up. I keep channeling like the writer for some reason, like an author or a poetry writer, something like that. Um, don't worry about that. If there's a part of your story where you need to include details about your life that could paint somebody else in a light that isn't perfect, don't let that stop you. Share your story anyways. Even if it's going to start some kind of a petty argument, recognize that it's not their story to tell, it's yours. And if they want to tell their side of the story, they can go out and write a book or do whatever they're going to do too. So 
Um, I hope this gives you guys the courage to step forth and to really do the dang thing because I'm really sensing that you guys are so deeply wonderful and creative and you know, we need more of you. We need you. <laughs> we need you beautiful creative types in the world to bring more beauty and more light and more love in. So don't be afraid of this divine calling and you know, just trust yourself and trust the process. And I, anyways, you guys, that is going to do it for this reading. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I'm at cozy kill. And, uh, also I think, oh, if you want to commission me for a private reading, you can do so at my discord link. It's down below and I will catch you guys in a future video. Bye.